All right, today we are continuing and we're going to take the next step from what we did and look at the electric field and the potential on the axis of a uniformly charged disk. So, um, the nice thing about this is if this is a front view of our disk, um, the differential charge element that we're going to look at, dq, is, is just a ring inside of that disk. And for the setup we're about to see, we say the radius of the ring is A, which you can't really tell, and the radius of the disk is capital R. Um, so that's going to mean some interesting things for our dq. We'll go ahead and just look at that right now. Um, dq, in this case, because we're talking about something with um, charge distributed over an area, dq is going to be uh, something called sigma times a differential piece of area where this sigma thing is defined as charge per unit area. Uh, it's a lowercase sigma, it looks different than a capital sigma. Um, so what we have to do is define this differential piece of area. So what we're looking at here is a circle and it has thickness, it's very tiny, um, but if that radius is A, then the thickness is dA. And so what we have for that area, uh, as of anything else, is its length, the length of the circle being the circumference, 2 pi A times the uh, thickness, dA. So my dQ in this case is 2 pi times A times uh, dA. That's going to be our dQ. Now the nice thing is we already know the electric field on axis from this little bit of dQ. Uh, that's really nice. So the differential electric field that goes with that is the electric field from a uniformly charged ring, which we just looked at. Um, so in this case it's going to be k dQ times it was B in our last video, but we'll call it the X coordinate X over the X measurement X squared plus A squared to the three halves. We're going to be using this, but instead of that being my total charge Q, it's just DQ. So let's get into this. All right, switching slides. So for a uniformly charged disk of charge, our differential charge element dQ is that guy. And like we just said in the last slide, dQ is sigma times 2 pi a dA. And the differential electric field at some location x away, we know it's going to point in this direction, um, dE is k uh, dqx over x squared plus a squared to the three halves. So all we're going to do to find the electric field is plug uh, this in for dq and see what happens. So that's k times sigma times 2 pi a dA, that was all dq, times x over x squared plus a squared to three halves. So now we have to integrate. L looking at this, the only thing that I'm integrating with respect to is A. So I'm going to leave most everything has A in it alone. So my electric field is going to be the K times sigma times pi times x, a lot to have on the outside, times the integral of 2a dA over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves. And we're integrating from the place where a is equal to 0 at the center all the way out to the edge of my disk r. So from a, sorry, from 0 to capital R. Now, this integral is pretty simple. You can find it on an integration table. Because 2a is the derivative of this, it's, it's, it's very simple. Um, my electric field is going to be k times sigma 
times pi times x. We haven't put in our limits yet, but we're going to have my function x squared plus a squared, and we're going to add a 1 to that. So it goes from negative 3 halves to negative 1 half, and we're going to divide by negative 1 half, leaving a negative 2 on top. And we're going from 0 to r. So plugging in those limits, which is the next important step that we have to do, I'm just going to bring that 2 out. We got 2k sigma times pi times x. And if we end up at r, going from 0 to r, okay, if we end up at r, that's negative 1 over x squared plus r squared, the 1 half minus 1 minus negative 1 over x squared to the 1 half. Um, we don't have to worry about r there because it's 0. So uh, to simplify things and to, and to finalize my electric field, the electric field is this stuff, um, 2k sigma pi x times, and then this one's going to be first, 1 over x minus 1 over the square root of x squared plus r squared. Okay, that's, that's tricky, but that's what we're after. Now, looking at this for the electric field, the things that I feel are very important are being able to find this dq and knowing to plug it into that function of the, of the electric field, that differential piece of the electric field. Um, after finding the electric field, as always, we are going to be looking at the potential at the same spot. So um, that dq doesn't change. We get rid of all of our work for the differential electric field. So looking at what we have for potential, we know that dv is equal to k dq over our radius, which last time happened to be x squared, the b coordinate, plus a squared to the 1 half, what we had before. <clears throat> just the substitution of q for dq. The same idea that we did with the electric field, we're going to integrate both sides and plug in our dq. So we have the integral of k times sigma times 2 pi a dA over x squared plus a squared, uh, this time to the 1 half. <clears throat> and we have a very similar integral to take, um, k times sigma times pi on the square root of 2a over x squared plus a squared to the 1 half times dA. Um, same thing's going to apply, and we're going again from 0 to big R. Um, k sigma pi, and when we take that integral, we're going to have x squared plus a squared we're going to add 1 to negative 1 half, um, so that's the square root of x squared plus a squared, and then we're going to divide that by negative 1 half, so we get negative 2 from 0 to r. Now plugging in our limits, k sigma, well, 2k sigma pi times negative root x squared plus r squared minus negative square root of x squared, or uh, x. So that was fun. We're done with that. And the potential is 2k sigma pi times x minus the square root of x squared plus r squared. Uh, and that's all we have for the disk of charge. Now, 
to look in general at what we've done so far, I'm going to pull up a blank screen and, and we're going to look at our cases. So the first case that we looked at was overall um, we'll call it the arc of charge and, and the good thing to know about this is that um, dq was equal to lambda dx or sorry lambda dl and, and for what we're going to use because as we go from piece to piece the angle changes it was lambda times r times d theta this would be the dq for an arc of charge. And remember for the arc of charge, if I had one dE in this direction, I have a similar differential electric field this way, and all we wanted was the dE cosine theta part of that. It was very important in how we set up our arc of charge. The next thing we looked at is the poorly drawn ring of charge. The ring of charge was nice because our dq was just equal to dq. That stayed the same as we moved all the way around the ring and nothing else really changed. Um, my r, the radius, the distance between the point and my dq was the same the whole time and it was the height of my ring plus however far away we were in the x-axis squared. Um, and again, we have this, this same thing going on where we need the DE cosine theta part. And so cosine theta here also had to be defined as X over R. That's what gave us our, our unique electric field from that. And then we had um, the even harder to draw solid disk where the differential charge element on that was the ring inside of it, which means we're borrowing from what we had before. So that's my dq, and it's equal to sigma times a differential piece of area. And when we looked at that differential piece of area, we just did it. It was 2 pi times the diameter, I'm sorry, times the radius of our differential circle times that tiny thickness that it had. Uh, so that's the dq that we need to know from that. And because we already know the electric field from that, the differential electric field was <clears throat> k times x times dq over x squared plus a squared to the 3 halves. And we integrate that. When we integrate it, our limits are 0, the beginning radius of our circle, all the way out to R, the end radius of that thing. So, that these are the three big things that we've looked at so far with this. What we're going for is an overall understanding of finding and defining DQ, looking at whatever symmetry that we have, and integrating it until we get our electric field.